Welcome back. Uh, we're going to start delving into arrays today and some exercises that show off our ability to store large blocks of data in consecutive spaces. In our first little exercise, we're going to make an array of five numbers. Uh, print each one out and print the sum of the numbers. So it shouldn't be too hard. Let's make a new notebook. This is exercise one. Okay, an array of five numbers. There's lots of different way ways to create arrays of five numbers, but I'll do a pretty straightforward one, which is um, an integer array uh, called numbers, and it's going to be each number. Oh, uh, oops, I messed up the, I always mix up the, the format for this. So uh, the brackets don't go here, you put them at the end. So there we go. Okay, and now I have my numbers. And I can even see them if you try to output the expression. Uh, Jupyter is clever enough to at least know what the um, what the array should look like in terms of uh, the values inside. Now I want to print each number and print the sum of the numbers. So I'm going to want a loop. My loop is going to go through my array. You can literally think of it as stepping on each of the elements one at a time. And as it goes through, it grabs that number, prints it out, and adds it to a continually growing sum. So I need a sum. Sums always start as zero. I need a loop. I kind of autopilot my way through writing the loop until I pause right here and I say, okay, how many numbers are there? Well, I know there's five, so I'm just gonna write five. And then for each number that's there, I want to print out the number and the number that I'm at inside of my loop. Well, how do I get that? I know my array is called numbers and then I need to index the element that I'm looking at, at the, in the loop. So it, the first time I want to go through, I want to grab number zero. So i is going to be zero the first time I go through my loop. The second time it'll be one, then two, then three, then four. And then it won't go to hit five because i has to be less than five. And the indices of these elements are zero, one, two, three, and four. There is no index five. So there we have it. I also want to add the numbers up. So sum plus equals numbers i to add it to my sum. And then I'll print out the sum is what it is. There we go. The sum of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 15. Okay, on to the next one. Number two. Make an array of five characters. Prompt the user for five letters. Put each letter in the array. Then identify which letter comes alphabetically last. And if you want, as a bonus exercise, you can try to do this ignoring the case, but we're just gonna do it for lowercase. Okay. Yep. So exercise two, let's go. So first things first, I need an array of five characters, but this time I'm not gonna put actually any characters in them. However, I still need to allocate the space for it. So I want a character array of letters. And how many of them are there gonna be? There's gonna be five. Okay, so now I have space for these five characters. We're gonna prompt the user for or five of them and put each letter in the array. So to prompt the user, I need to say, Yo, give me a letter. Now, if I want to prompt the user, I also need to include IO stream um, so that I am able to actually ask them for something. Oop. We're going to need to put that into our array. So from the standard input, grab their letter and put it into the letters array somewhere. We'll figure that out after. And then later we'll worry about the alphabetically um, last one. But now what I want to do is I want to do this five times. So I want a for loop. i is zero, i is less than five times. So I know that the code inside this loop will go exactly five times. And where am I going to store that letter? I'm going to store it in element i. i going from zero, one, two, three, four, and then stopping. Okay, so now I've gotten five letters. So you'll say uh, A, Z, G, F, D. And so now my letters has all of these, but I want to figure out which one is last, and we can see it's Z. So how do I know? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by assuming that maybe the first one is the last one. So last letter is potentially letter zero. Now let's find out if that's actually true by looking at every other letter that's left. And if we see that one of them happens to come after the letter we're looking at, we'll change it. So for 
I is, and this time we're gonna start from one because we already grabbed the first letter to see if that's the last one. So we can skip that and start from one. We're still going up to uh, position five. And each time we're going to see is the last letter less than letters I. Remember, all of our characters are just numbers. And numerically, the lowest numbered character comes alphabetically first. You know, A has a value of what, 65, I think, and Z is 90. So, uh, for uppercase, that is. So, if I see that a letter comes, is, is a bigger number in the computer, that means it comes after, and I need to remember that one because that's the one that actually comes last. So, if I notice that the last letter comes before this new one I've encountered, then my last letter is actually the new one I found. And we'll repeat this process until we've gone through the whole thing. And then we should know that the last letter, in this case, is Z. And now I can rerun this just to make sure it works again, trying something slightly different. So let's say that I do this for um, H, M, Y, X, A. And you can see that Y alphabetically comes last. And there we have it. Okay, on to number three, third exercise using size of. So here is where we look at when you create an array, how much space does it take up in the computer? Um, and so for this, I think I'm actually going to um, sidetrack things a little bit and go over to one of my favorite tools for the course, Python Tutor. Python Tutor is super handy because it allows you to visualize what's actually going on in your program. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Don't worry too much about the, um, the int main thing here. That's just where we're gonna write our code. Um, and we have IOStream already there, which is nice. Okay, so here is our little exercise. Um, and what I'm going to do is, um, so I recommend you trying to use size of inside of Jupyter to see what happens, but we're going to try using it out here just to um, print out some of the values, but we'll also actually see them show up on the side of the screen. So let's make some arrays first of all. So I'm gonna have some letters. Let's say that I want uh, six of them for fun. A long, longs, seven, int, nums, so eight, bool, bools. <laughs> Not being very creative with that one. And float, floats. Now if you want, you can output the size of any of these by going size of and then saying, for instance, letters. And we'll see what happens with that, and then we'll try for the other ones. Okay, so let's say I run this. Now you can see over here that there is now space for a bunch of these different variables. Uh, now, I think I need to actually initialize it with some data, or Python is not gonna look at things very nicely. So let's actually put some values in here. Um, so let's say, you know, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, longs is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we'll just do all true for this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we'll fill the sum up with uh, ones. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just so we can actually see it populate things properly. Oh, missed a, um, oh, I think I, I don't wanna have these in here. I don't think those are necessary. Uh, and then what did I miss? Oh, I missed a semicolon right here. There we go, okay. All right. So now you can see that as I go through one step at a time, I'm populating all of my arrays. And now how much space does this actually take up? Well, you can actually look at the memory addresses of these to see the numbers of the addresses. Here we have 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. So you can tell each one takes up one byte of memory. Here what happens? Well, BA0, BA8, BB0, BB8, like the droid. And you can probably guess that this is going up by eight every time. 
our numbers go from B50, B54, B58, B5C, B60, B64. It's going up by four every time. Uh, our Booleans are also going up by one, 47, 48, 49, 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D, 4E, 4F. Um, and then our floats look like they're going up by four every time. So we can see kind of visually exactly what is happening with the space. And if you want to get even more, um, you, know, you know, even deeper, <laughs> Uh, if this will actually let me. Are we going okay here? Some weird stuff happening with the... Uh... There we go. You can literally see each byte themselves. So here is this byte, which represents a D. This long number is represented by 100 in binary, and then a bunch of zeros because you just have tiny numbers here. Uh, and so if you really want to get like right down into what is the computer actually doing in terms of zeros and ones, you can use the byte level view for that. But going just back to printing out the size of, you can see the size of our letters is six, because there are six letters. But if I change this to say, what is the size of longs? How many bytes does longs take up? And it says 56. Where does that come from? There are seven long numbers, and we saw each one takes up eight bytes. Now, if you do a little bit of you know thinking mathematically, you can actually figure out if you knew that longs was 56, and you knew they were long numbers, you can just divide. 56 divided by eight gives you seven, and then you know exactly how many values are inside of your array just based on the size of here. So. Um, try this out also in Jupyter, I recommend it, but here is really the best way to visualize exactly what is the computer doing, and I encourage you to try this out so you can take a look at where all of the bytes are, where all the ones and zeros are, and really get familiar with what the computer is doing when you write all of this code. Uh, what I will do is I think I'll drop this in um, into a Jupyter notebook just so that you have access to what I did. Uh, make a new notebook. Uh, and I'll remove the uh, into main, so you can you can run this as it is. Uh, yeah, 56. There we go. Okay, uh, exercise three. Now on to the last one, number four. Okay. Two-dimensional arrays. So an array doesn't just have to have a sequence of single things. It can be an array of arrays. So let's do that. All right. Make two three by two arrays of integers representing matrices. Okay, so when I think about a three by two array, it's an array that has three items in it, and each of those are arrays that have two items in them. Um, so you can write it out. Remember that white space doesn't matter in C. So the way that you write this out isn't too important, but you can write it in a way that makes it a little easier to understand. So we'll have matrix one, which will be a matrix containing one, two, three, four, separated by commas, five, six. And this is a little, I think, easier perhaps to see, uh, there we go, what's actually going on in here. I have three different pairs inside of my matrix. Also, I need to put the, um, the, the I, I think I need two boxes. Yeah, is that right? No, I just need one. I'm trying to remember what the, uh, the exact format is here. Uh, can I do three by two? There we go. So you do need to specify what the size is, but there's my three by two array. And then I want another three by two array which is matrix two, but this one will have everything multiplied by 10. Just so we can have some different numbers in here. Okay, now I wanna add these together and store it in a new matrix. So I'm gonna make matrix three, and it's going to also be three by two, but this one I'm not gonna put anything in uh, when I declare it. Instead, I'm now going to loop through all of the numbers in here and put them in the right spots. So you can correctly guess probably that you need a for loop. 3i plus plus, but not only do you need a for loop, you need a second for loop. One of these for loops is going to use i to go from 0 up to 3 and go through each of the pairs. 
the second for loop is going to go through the numbers of those pairs, the first one and the second one. So this one is going to use j, just because it comes after i. j is 0, j is less than 2, j plus plus. And now, matrix number 3, position i, position j. Remember, i is going to go from 0 to 3, so that's this first one. And j is going to go from 0 to 2, so that's the second one. And what is it equal to? It's equal to matrix 1, i, j, plus matrix 2, i, j. And let's see what matrix 2 looks like at the end. Uh, oh, what did I mess up? Uh, let's run everything. Perhaps that's the problem. There we go. 1 plus 10 is 11, 2 plus 20 is 22, and so on. And here is my new matrix 3 that has three pairs, just like the others, but they are the sum of the ones that are here. And this is super important because this is how a lot of graphics works by combining matrices together. Um, and really what we're learning how to do here is just the building blocks of being able to work with these large, large sets of numbers, which may not just be two dimensions, but potentially three dimensions or many more dimensions if you're doing AI, for instance. Uh, and all that depends on being able to block these groups of values together and to manipulate them as you choose. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you in the next one.